Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks tutorial. In today's video we are going to be showing you how to build a basic jet engine helicopter here in Stormworks. We'll go over all the components required as well as show you how to connect and pipe everything together uh, and then hopefully by the end of the video you should have a basic understanding of how to build your own helicopter using the jet engines here in Stormworks. So with that all said, let's go ahead and get started. Now to get started we're just going to go over to our workbench here on the Creative Island. Now the first thing we need to do is obviously set up a base for our helicopter. I'm going to go ahead and enable the X-plane just to the right here so it builds on either side. So it's going to start building the base for the helicopter itself. It's going to build it out probably about 5 wide. From there we also want to have some legs for the helicopter itself. Now this is not going to look anything pretty or anything extravagant. It's just going to be a simple way to obviously explain to you guys how to build a helicopter with a jet engine and all the components that you need and then to use your creativity at the end of the day to go ahead and build your own helicopter using everything that you learned from this tutorial. Now once we have the base down, the first thing we want to do is place down a um, pilot seat so we can actually sit in the helicopter and control it. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the pilot seat itself. This is where you're going to be putting your inputs for your controls. So whatever you sit in there and you send your um, numbers out, that's what's going to be actually controlling the helicopter itself. Now, once we have that done, obviously in the name of the title, we're going to be using a jet engine for this tutorial. Now, a jet engine consists of a couple of different components. The first component that you are going to require is going to be a intake for your actual um, engine itself. Once we move on from the intake, the next piece that we will need is going to be the combustion chamber. Followed by that, we're also going to need a compressor. And then lastly, we're going to need a turbine itself. Now we will need the turbine that has the power output. So we're using this one instead of the small one. We do not need an exhaust because we do not want any power coming out of the engine itself. So to start with, we're going to grab our intake. Now our intake, I'll probably put somewhere around here. So we can go ahead and delete those pieces grab the actual engine itself like that we are then going to be putting the compressor down once we have the compressor down we want to grab the combustion chamber this is where you're going to be taking your fuel and then lastly you want to grab your actual turbine medium and this is where you're going to be getting your power output now it is possible to make this smaller uh, instead of using a combustion chamber um, over here you could use a electric engine if you want uh, it's it's up to you on what you want to do but this is a basic jet engine just in front of us uh, and this if using all the components normally required this is what you will need obviously as I said you could make this smaller if you want to you would use a electric engine just over here uh, on the actual turbine itself now once we have that down the next thing we want to do is obviously start working out the rest of the frame for the helicopter. Now I'm just going to do a simple frame just going up here like so and that is where we're going to put our actual rotor blades and then I'm going to do the same for the rear. Just build it up like so and then we are going to build out across at the back and this is where we are actually going to be putting our tail rotor itself. So we can go ahead and grab the tail rotor right now while we're here. I'm just going to delete that piece there disable my x-plane again just so we build on one side and not on the other side next piece we want to do is obviously as i said earlier we want to go get our rotors now you have the large rotor and you have the huge rotor i'm probably going to be using just a normal large rotor for this build i don't think we need anything bigger than that uh, just to show you how it works now once we have that all done we can now start thinking about wiring up our actual uh, jet engine itself now you can see that these things have two ports, there's one for fuel and there's another one for power. The power obviously needs to go to the rotors themselves, so that's pretty simple how to do that. We can obviously just delete a piece over here, replace it with a straight enclosed pipe. Now you could obviously do whichever way you want, however I'm just going to do it for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to be doing it like this. I'm putting a T-piece there so we can split the power and send it to the rear also. And then pretty much to get all this piped up, we are just going to go ahead and connect the pipes like so, nice and easy. And then for the actual going back to go to the tail rotor, once again, we are just going to go use some pipes and we are just slowly going to work it around the engine itself until we get it to the tail rotor. 
now you could if you want to drop it down uh place wherever you like as i said guys this is going to be just to show you the basics uh you can then tailor it as to how you want uh and as where you want to build things um but as i said just the basics just to show you how to get it done um i have done a previous video with just a aircraft engine i know a lot of you guys have been asking for this video uh, where i've actually shown you how to do it with jet engine hence the reason why we're doing it now today um so we're just going to go ahead and put that pipe there we're going to use another straight piece just over here just to bring it down one and then we are going to be running it from there to the actual tail rotor which you can see has the output or input at the bottom and then we're just going to go grab some straight pipes and run that just like that so you can now see our two actual rotor blades are connected to the engine and they will be taking power from there the next thing we need to do is obviously think about some fuel now you have different options you can use any of the three pre-built tanks otherwise you could also make your own custom tank just remember that jet engines do take quite a lot of um quite a lot of uh, fuel so you might want to consider that when you are building this uh so the purpose of the tutorial i'm just going to go ahead and put one down uh, i think that'll be enough to get off the ground uh, if we need to change that we can obviously and then to connect it up once again just go ahead put some pipes down and then connect it to the engine now that takes care of the components for the actual jet engine itself the last component that we will need is going to be a gyro and the gyro is going to be to balance the helicopter itself in theory what it is is <laughs> a whole bunch of pids uh, that make everything a little bit more stable um, now you don't have to use a gyro it's really up to you uh you'll see the difference just now what it feels like to use one and not what use one uh, i'll enable it and then disable it and then lastly what we're going to be doing is just putting down two batteries uh now you don't once again you don't have to use two batteries i'm just putting two batteries down just to make it stable uh so we don't have it more weight on one side in comparison to the other side now that as i said that's all the controls that you need there's no you don't need any more other components batteries fuel engine rotors chair gyro that's it to get this helicopter started obviously uh, you could obviously put some dials and things on here if you wanted to to obviously change that um, I usually recommend at least using a throttle uh, it just gives you a visual indication of how much your throttle is for the jet engine itself uh, so we'll place that down just over there uh, and we can actually write on there and say jet throttle pretty easy uh, and then the rest of the controls we can actually get linked up through the actual pilot seat itself and then we will need some logic um, so before we actually get into it I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you guys to put down a PID uh, and we'll get into config configuring it just now uh, so we'll just place one somewhere on the build itself now controls itself we'll go over the actual controls of the seat itself now as always you have four controls here you have your AD you also have your WS you should also have your up down and then your left and right now on a helicopter itself a and d i usually like to make it make the roll so you can see we're going to connect this over to the roll so we find it over just over here on the gyro you can see roll there the next is ws i like to use this for the pitch of the helicopter so we'll go ahead once again to find the pitch on the actual gyro next off we're going to do is the up and down up and down is going to be the collective of the actual rotor itself but if you go over to the gyro it's going to be the up and down of the gyro so it's pretty simple up and down is going to be up and down great then you have left and right of the seat itself once again i like to use it for the left and right or the yaw of controlling the helicopter so whether the tail rotor moves or doesn't move so we connect that to the yaw pretty simple now to get this all connected up to the relevant pieces once again it's pretty simple follow the labels you can see this is stabilized up and down that gets connected to the collective you then have also the stabilized pitch once again found the pitch connected there you then have stabilized roll once again connected to the roll and then lastly you have the yaw which goes and connects to the tail rotor itself now there's a couple other things i want you to note is that first off is that on the rotor itself you can see you have your blade count so you can change how many blades you want to use on it and you also have a blade pitch positive or neutral positive means that if you as soon as you start turning this it's going to bring the helicopter up it's going to pull the helicopter up if you put this into neutral the rotors will turn however it will not lift unless it has too much power now if you even a neutral that means you can you can actually control it using the collective itself if you were to go and use this in positive i'll usually recommend connecting the up and down of the collective connected to your engine throttle itself 
So we'll go ahead and connect that and just leave it as a neutral. And then we can go into the back here once again, leave it on neutral. There's the option of doing a positive also. However, I recommend leaving a neutral. The reason if you put it as positive as soon as the actual engine turns on here, this is going to start turning and it's going to start turning the helicopter in the 360 degree. We don't want that. We only want it when we actually tell it to turn. And hence the reason why I've gone and used it through a gyro. Now you obviously have minimum and maximum throttle on your gyro. We're going to leave it as it is right now. We can go over here. You have a couple different controls here. AD reset sensitivity. So you can change if these want to be sticky or not sticky. I usually recommend for helicopter to leave it as it is. Obviously you can change sensitivity as you want. Now first thing is we're going to have to turn the engines on. So we're going to write one is going to be the starter. So you can see here these actually have external outputs. So instead of putting down key buttons or toggle buttons or push buttons, you can actually just use the controls from the seat itself. So we're going to use one as our starter, two as our auto hover, because there is an auto hover feature on the gyro itself just over here. This means that everything is super stable. We're going to connect obviously our jet compressor. That's the on switch there. We also need another one just over here. Now we actually can, we actually don't need to connect that. We can actually just, all we need to do for that uh, is put down a constant on signal and we'll get to that later on. Next, moving on, uh, what else do we need to control? Obviously, if we wanted to get the digital displays out of the actual engine, we could go ahead and put some dials here and we could see what's happening with that. And then lastly, what we're doing is taking our throttle value, which is going to control how fast the jet engine is going at the end of the day. Now, we, uh, you can just see I've connected directly to that. However, I wouldn't recommend doing that. What I would recommend is taking that throttle value, connecting it over to the set point of a pit, taking the output of that pit and connecting it to your jet engine. The reason why is that if you put your throttle there, it doesn't matter what your temperature is or what your airspeed is or anything else, which means this engine is probably gonna catch on fire or explode very quickly. The reason why we run through a pit is that it obviously measures what throttle we have and then measures it against the RPS of the actual intake itself. So if this is too low or too high, it will then alter your pit itself. Now we always want it on, that's why I went and placed this on signal just over here and I've gone ahead and connected to the pit itself. Now the settings for the pit, it's, pit, it's really up to you at the end of the day. I like to do a 0 0.01, a 0 0.1 and then a 0 0.0001. Now you can play around with that as much as you want, however I found that's the general one that works. Um, it's really up to you at the end of the day. One thing we also need to do is go ahead to our fuel tank, the one that we placed already, and make sure it's on jet fuel, otherwise the engine won't work itself. And then that's pretty much about it for all the controls and all actually all the logic pieces of it. The last thing we need to do is get some electricity running through everything. We're just going to simply go ahead and connect everything here. As always, you could use a circuit breaker if you wanted to limit everything. However, I don't. I want it just to stay as is. And then the last thing we're going to be doing is just going into our hotkeys, double checking we have everything. So you can see the start, the start is on a toggle, I want it on a push, and then you can see the auto hovers on the toggle, which I want. That means when you press it, it will stay on unless you press it off. Whereas a push, push it down, it will be on. As soon as you let go of it, it's gonna be off. So what we can do now is go actually and spawn this in for the first time. So you can see here, it's a little bit um, a little bit heavy towards the rear. That's fine. It shouldn't really affect the flying. What we could do is always just make this a little bit shorter or we could put a little bit more weight in the front itself. Jump into the pilot seat itself. Now, what we want to do first off is turn on our autopilot. I like turning it on first off. Um, just makes it super stable when starting the engine. You can see now that if we hold down one, our engine tries to turn over, but because it doesn't have any throttle, it nothing will happen. We obviously forgot to do one thing, which is go to our throttle and set a number value of zero to 150. I usually recommend 150. Uh, the engines can go up to 200, but as soon as it goes to 200, it's going to actually break the engine or explode or catch it on fire. So 150, I usually like to go with. So go ahead, spawn that in again. Go back over to our pilot seat. Enable our auto hover. Get the throttle going. Hold down one. And actually, if you bring this more a little bit forward, we should hear that wait for that combustion, that boom, and you can see we can now let go of our starter. And the helicopter is starting up for the first time. And because we've given it so much throttle, it's automatically lifting up. 
So we're just going to decrease that throttle a bit. And then you can see now we can fully control the helicopter. We can bring it forward if we want to. And fly it around. Now, the output is probably a little bit too high for this helicopter. Hence the reason why it's shaking a little bit. Now you can see we've loaded it. It seems to be much more less shaky, shaky to how it was before. So yeah, that's pretty much about it. Uh, you can obviously turn the auto hover off and you can see instantly <laughs> it, it doesn't like that. Uh, it prefers to be in auto hover mode. So I like to leave it on. Uh, but once again, it's up to you at the end of the day. So yeah, that's pretty much all the um, things that you need to make your own helicopter here in Stormworks. So I think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there, guys. Uh, as always, comment below what you'd like to see in any future videos. While there, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to follow any of my upcoming content. And finally, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.